Hello and welcome to Hop Along Studio. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you how to make a simple Valentine's Day card. You'll notice with the materials that I have laid out here that it's not going to be conventional pink and red colors. I'm going to use a little bit more variation in this particular card design. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is what type of paper we'll be using for this project and what size of card dimension we want to use for this project. I'm actually doing a slimline card for you today. I've never actually done a slimline card before, so I thought it'd be fun to give it a try. I'm actually using 90 pound Staples card stock for my card back. And basically I have now cut this to seven and a half by eight and a half inches. Part of the reason I've chosen these dimensions is because an eight and a half sheet is a standard size width for, for cardstock. So then this way you can really cut it to whether other other dimension you want and have it still work for making a card like this. Uh, I, you, can, you can use a bone folder once you divide it in half just to basically give that a really strong crease. And then that's basically your card back. So you want to set that aside and we will start talking about the paper that we'll be using. So the paper we'll be using today for this project is by Wild Whisper Designs. It's an adventure collection of paper. It's actually very outdoorsy, but what I love about it are these arrows. These arrows for me, I thought would be really great as a non-pink and red Valentine's Day card. And so I've actually already cut out two pieces from this collection. Uh, these ones are... This one is cut to three and a half by eight and a half, and this one's cut to three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And the reason for that is so that they can, this will be basically the the card the card back that will be going on to our pre folded piece of paper. And I'm going to be adding this straight on top to create a little border. I like the idea of actually having a border on these slimline cards, especially when you're using pattern paper. I think it's nice to give uh, the eye a place to rest. I feel like these these textures, even though they're both textured paper, they work very well together. And that's the beauty of adding something that is part of a collection is you often get papers that will match and work well together. And in this case, I'm going to be adding some other hearts and other embellishments on top, but I wanted to start with by adding a little bit of ink to this background. I really like having textures and layers and very subtle layers that show up on, on your project. So the first thing I'm going to do is add this Tim Holtz stencil. This is shattered. It's actually supposed to be more of a spider web or cracked glass, but I find it really nice for creating uh, inked layering that doesn't compete with the back paper. So if you're ever wondering how you can actually uh, figure out which color to put on the background if you're uncertain about where to start, I've taken an offcut of the paper and I actually I tried out three different colors as well as, th as several different stencil types through this. So this way you can see is the pattern that you're putting in competing with the background or does it actually complement the background? And that's why I chose the shattered and I chose evergreen bow for this particular inking through the stencil. And again, because the stuff, uh, the distress oxide ink does layer nicely, you can put in a bit of texture without it necessarily becoming too much. And by adding just very subtle layers as you go, this gives you variation to your design. And I know you don't necessarily have to do this step. I just can't help but alter things and add additional layers. <laughs> so it's my nature to, to always add a little bit more color and a little bit more design to it. And I don't want it to have a perfect stencil image, so I'm going to actually move the stencil around. I kind of like having some of the big areas like this over some of the really tight areas because I, I want this to be a very loose pattern and again I don't want it to compete with paper. This paper is so beautiful that I, I want it to really be showcased in this project. And by just doing a little bit of ink blending like this through the stencil, again adds a little bit of variation. And I'm actually going to go in and add a little bit of ice spruce on top. The ice spruce is a little bit darker color. I'm not going to add a lot of it, but I do want to add contrast to one area that I plan to add to kind of be the focal part of my card. And sometimes it is nice to add a bit of variation. Thank you. 
So once you've inked that, you can actually just add it to your card background because uh, we're not going to be adding any more ink on top of it. And this will give you an idea of basically how this is going to sit on the background and allow you to design the card around this base color. And if you haven't tried any of the Wild Whisper paper, it's a great paper to use. Yeah, so this, this paper is really nice because it does have a bit of a glossy finish. I find it holds up to paint and other mediums really well. I like that it is designed and printed in, in Canada and actually in my city specifically. And so one thing to talk about, I actually already have cut out all of these images. I actually have a brother scanning cut and this and these uh, die cuts were from a collection that I found online that was free with my brother scanning cut. They often have projects up there. This is actually one of the images from another uh, project that they had online and I didn't really particularly want to do that project but I liked the image itself. I like the way the hearts are in groups and just how nicely this is going to work with this background and I use the same paper that I used along the edges here to again tie in a few colors and I and just add a little bit of uh, interest instead of just having just plain hearts. I also cut out this heart and I actually use this Pambray watercolor paper that's also by Wild Whisper Designs. I, I chose this particular one. I really liked the pattern on this side, but this is one area where you can really make your die cuts more interesting by using some of these pattern papers that have color and texture, but they're not necessarily highly patterned. Makes it an easier way to use some of these in die cuts and other things without it necessarily taking away from the image itself. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is just start layering these on top of each other and kind of see what I kind of come up with for a general design. And so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I, what I would do is if you find a spot where you really like the design you've come up with, take a picture of it with your phone just so that you don't end up taking them all off and forgetting where you put them. And because before we actually adhere everything down, I would like to move on and do something with this heart. So with this heart, I really like the paper itself, but again, I love altering things. I like adding additional texture. So I have actually chosen to use these gears. I think I got these off of Amazon or somewhere. And I want to actually alter the color of these gears and add them to the heart. So to make all these metal pieces part of like one cohesive unit, what I'm going to do is add some alcohol pearls and alcohol inks. So I'm using Clover, Tranquil, Pool, Aquamarine, and Smolder. I'm going to start by adding a few colors of alcohol ink to my felt here that's on my blending tool. I'm adding Pool, Aquamarine, and again, you can do one or two dots. Like you don't have to go, you don't need very much of this stuff for it to go a long way. And I'm gonna apply those just straight onto these metal pieces. I know there's a lot of different ways you can just add add alcohol inks to some of these, but this is one of the ways that I like using them. And that gold one, because it is a little bit harder to cover up because it is so bright, I'm just going to add some straight to it. It's another thing you can do. And I'm actually going to also add a little bit of clover and smolder. And smolder is kind of a mushroom color and then it has the little bits of mica bits in it. So I think it adds, adds a different quality to these as well. So. Again, just play around with colors and figure out what kind of works with your paper and what kind of colors you would really like to see with these. This guy here, because they're so, it's a lot more 3D than the others. I'm just gonna throw some straight on like that. And mix it around a little bit. And again, I'm just trying to make everything, instead of looking at them like one's gold, one's brass, now everything looks a lot more like one cohesive unit. So you want to set these aside. It's only going to take them a few seconds to dry, but I'm also wanting to go in and make some changes to our heart shape before we adhere these to the heart. I'm actually going to go with a little bit of cracked pistachio here and just add a little bit of color to the edges. Doesn't need a lot, just a little bit of something. 
And then I'm actually going to add in a little bit of this vintage photo color. Just to let the edges be a little bit more distinct. So they stand out against our card. Because I do like the fact that this does work with the colors on the card, but you don't want it to all be the same color. And actually I had some other gears that I had done earlier that I'm also going to possibly use on this project. This is the part where it gets kind of fun because you're just going to start adding in different gears depending on what kind of look you want. So I'm going to add in just a few different ones and kind of come up with a, a nice layout. And then once you figure out what layout you want, you just want to adhere them with some glue. I'm using in this case this US Arquest uh, just clear glue. Um, anything that glues that that the glue goes outside of the edges, again, it's going to dry clear, so it's not really going to matter. Before I just leave this to dry, I'm going to add one more thing, and that's going to be this glass bead gel that I have from Golden. I'm going to use a little bit of a palette knife and just basically take a little bit of this glass bead gel and add to the edges. And if you watched my video from a few weeks ago that I did for Wild Whisper, it was that um, I did use this in another project and showed you how you could apply it through a stencil. I love this gel because it adds a lot of texture and a little bit of shine but without kind of taking over the project. I like this glass bead gel. I'd say buy a small container if you can of it. I wouldn't necessarily buy a lot unless you're going to be using a lot of it in your projects. Uh, they often do kind of have these sampler kits from Golden that will have a little bit of their mediums to try. And it's a great way to start getting into mediums and trying mediums. Usually I would say for most mediums, if you're only using a little bit, try the Ranger mediums. The Ranger mediums uh, come in smaller containers, so if you were not, if you realize you're not much of a medium person, at least then you're not spending too much money because this stuff does dry out over time. It does not last forever. Uh, but I don't think anyone I found except Golden actually does this glass bead gel. They have lots of different gels, granular gels, lots of different ones with different textures, and I like having a lot of variation texture. And so I'm just basically adding it to the edges here. And some of it's kind of going in between the bits of the stents, uh, bits of the gear. And once this dries, it'll dry clear as well. So you'll get the shine, and you won't necessarily get the the whiteness that you see right now. So you're gonna to want to let this whole thing dry. And once it's dry, uh, we'll move on to the next step. So now that this has dried, you'll notice along the edge here, I hope you can see in the camera, that you have the glass bead gel, but it is actually more shimmery and a little bit more texture than it is color. And that was the point. The point was to just to try to add a little bit of shimmer to this. If you wanted it darker, you could just add in some fluid ink or fluid paint just to add a little bit of color within those crevices if you wanted to try to add a little bit more texture to this. But as you can see, by the time I've actually let all of these, these dry, uh, the glue is all dry now, um, you actually end up having a really interesting focal image for your card. So to assemble this, I'm just going to use some glue dots to just uh, play around with this and actually ar arrange everything in a way that I would like. So always think about which layers you need to ad adhere first and kind of how you want this to look like when you're putting your card together. Uh, one thing that I really like to do when I am making cards is try to challenge myself towards something different. Uh, it's always easy to kind of fall to the same same patterns with your work and I, I fall into it too but I think there's something to be said about trying to push yourself a little bit to see what you can kind of create that might be a little bit different than what you usually create and that's part of the reason I chose these particular colors. I love the Wild Whisper paper but what I like more about it is trying to find a way to use it in a way that is interesting and not necessarily 
for the original purpose it was designed for. Because I think a lot of this paper is used for doing scrapbooking pages uh, about adventure, capturing those memories, and that's a great thing. But I think being able to go, well, what, what else can I do with this? How can I make this paper more useful to me when maybe I'm not necessarily doing an adventure page? And it's a great way when you actually have lots of paper left over from a project and you don't necessarily have an idea of what to do with it. Try something completely different. I generally like doing um, a little less pink and red cards for Valentine's Day, usually because I'm usually giving cards to my husband or uh, the other men in my life. And I think finding something that uh, is a little bit, maybe a little bit more masculine or a little bit more uh, not traditionally hearts and red for Valentine's Day is not a bad thing. And I think there's something to be said about Valentine's Day not just being about... Um, the girl getting the flowers and the jewelry and the presents and I think there's something to be said about loving on the men in our lives. I'm very thankful for the the men in my life. The man in my life really and and just the the people I have in my life. Uh, my male friends and other people and I think sometimes uh, it's nice to be able to acknowledge them as well. Yeah so I think this was maybe my way of being able to come up with a really great card design for my husband and also be able to maybe share with you an idea of how you can maybe a way of busting someone in your life that you really care about. So I felt like this card could use one final touch to it and I wanted to put a word on there and you could really use any word but I'm going to be using the word love. Uh, you could do this with stickers, you could do this with stamps. In my case I'm actually going to put my own writing in here. For those who don't like their own writing, I understand because I actually generally don't like my own writing, but it's been something I've been working on because I realized how much I dislike my writing on my projects. So instead of looking at it from the perspective of, well, I'm going to have all these art journaling pages without my own writing on it, instead I made the choice that I would learn how to write better or in a way that was a little bit nicer looking. And so that's actually going to go right here as part of the heart. I'm just going to alter it with some color first. I wanted to use colors Craft Pistachio and Iced Spruce because again, I have all these other colors in here and leaving this white for me doesn't really match with the rest of the card. So I'm just gonna use a blending foam and some Craft Pistachio. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of color just on the top. Stabbing it on. And then I'm going to add some ice spruce along the edges just so it gives a little bit of contrast. And then just using a couple glue dots, we're going to glue this in place. These mini glue dots are perfect for things like this. But again, you can always use letters. You can always use stickers uh, or stamps for this. So I'm just going to add that right on there. And actually before I finish, we should actually be putting this on the card background. I tend to actually do my card backs as separate pieces of paper and I just do basically a, a piece like this for my card. The reason I do that is in case I want to use it for something else because you can use this for a card, you can use this in an art journal, a layout, you can use this in a scrapbooking layout. There's a lot of different variations of using art like this and so instead of being forced to stick with a card, this allows me to have the versatility to use it for whatever I want to use it for. So here's the completed card. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you've learned something new or a new way to use some of the products that you have. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, if you could like it, subscribe to my channel, and maybe provide a comment below about what you liked about this video. Also, please visit Wild Whisper Designs. That's where a lot of this paper for this project came from. They have lots of beautiful products that I know help me and inspire me in my creative self-care practice. If you're interested in getting a 10% discount off of your next order with them, please use DT Nadine when ordering. Also visit my website hopalongstudio.com where I have other ideas on how to create a self-care habit in your own life. I hope you have a really great week and I will see you next time.